What's up, everybody? Ooh, delightful with every taste. Welcome to another video, a sort of different kind of video. A video I've done in the past that I haven't done in a few years, but I decided to this year because the movies were pretty much all so good. Today we're going to be talking about the Best Picture nominations and why I think they were nominated. Now, this is obviously very subjective, um, but what I'm going to try to do is try to look at it from an objective point of view and see why Oscar voters might have voted for these films, why they may have uh, decided that these were the best ones for the year, and uh, just kind of decipher what makes these films Oscar worthy. I'm just going to go through the, the list, not go into any great detail, but just kind of give my thoughts of what the fuck they were thinking. <laughs> now it doesn't help that Oscar voters don't always watch all the films that they're given to choose from. It's kind of an infamous quote at this point that Jennifer Lawrence didn't even watch Phantom Thread, so I go fuck yourself. Now I'm obviously a nobody, a douchey letterbox user, and uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. The Lighthouse. What do you mean it's not nominated for Best Picture? Curse ye, Academy! Let Poseidon strike ye down! Hark! What the fuck were you thinking there, Academy? Ford vs. Ferrari. Biopics are usually your safest bet for Oscar greatness. Even just recently, half the 2010 awards were given to biopics, biographical films of some sort. Argo, 12 Years a Slave, Spotlight, The Green Book, and The King's Speech. So it, it was kind of inevitable we'd get one this year. As you'd expect, Damon and Bale are great in their respective roles. The racing scenes are big words like pulse pounding and white knuckling, rip roaring, if that's your thing. It manages to tell a true story without feeling overly dramatic uh, while also being a bit formulaic. And Christian Bale might as well keep playing real characters because it seems to be working for him. The Irishman. I don't think it's surprising that a film made by Martin Scorsese is up for best picture. But I think the thing that is surprising, it's a film distributed by Netflix, a streaming service. And it's not the only one on this list. I think this would uh, indicate a shift in the filmmaking world that would make Steven Spielberg cringe a little bit. Uh, uh. It also represents a historical moment in film that we may and probably will never see again. De Niro, Pesci, and Pacino all on screen together in a film made by Martin Scorsese. It's almost a perfect way to celebrate the careers of these great filmmakers, Sands giving them the big prize. It's an epic historical crime drama that takes place over 50 plus years, involving the same actors with mostly great facial CGI. It's a visual and storytelling triumph and ranks among one of Scorsese's greats in his already fantastic filmography. I can read a script. Jojo Rabbit. In the probably regrettable words of Sean Penn, Who gave this son of a bitch his green card? Taika Waititi has genuinely been killing it throughout his whole career. Everything throughout his filmography has been critically acclaimed, so it was just a matter of time before one got the big prize nomination. It's a film that deals with some pretty decent themes and has the tough task of being a satire while also dealing with some heavy ideas. For the most part, it works for a little bit. It plays it a bit safe. The acting from the two young leads is also quite good. It's a feel-good movie with some surprises. All in all, I think the Nazi mocking in this politically divided climate is what really got it the nomination. And let's be honest, Nazis can fuck off. Joker. The performance. Little Women. Women. Because it's full of women. It's also filled with a ton of talent from seasoned vets like Laura and Meryl to rising stars and experienced talents like Emma, Florence, and Saoirse. It's well acted and pretty relevant to today's times, just like every adaptation before was during their time. It's a warm and lighthearted film that also slots in some pain and misery for good measure, as well from a source material that could be considered timeless that seems to work in any generation it's adapted in. It's also a much more mature and established work from Greta, and if the best director category wasn't already stacked, I think she'd probably get a nomination. Marriage Story. Another film distributed by Netflix. I think I can hear Steven screaming. It has everything that makes an Oscar-worthy film Oscar-worthy. Yelling, crying, 
good actors, yelling and crying, actors you haven't seen in a while, and Wendy Newman. Except this one is Oscar worthy and deserves the praise it gets. Balancing sides beautifully and performances that are grounded and real must really speak to a ton of Academy members that have gone through the same thing so many times. 1917. A testicle spectacle, a technical spectacle that may seem gimmicky to some, but sets itself apart from any war film. It's not a gimmick if it's something that you can do creatively to make the film better. It's hard hitting and immersive and just all around impressive filmmaking from everyone involved. The Academy at this point is forcing Roger Deakins to do ridiculous things to have to win Oscars. Once upon a time in Hollywood. It's a love letter to the industry, and voters go crazy when filmmakers talk about how great they are. For the record, I love this film too. Parasite. This is a genuine and welcome surprise for many reasons. None bigger than the fact this is a foreign film already nominated for Best International Feature Film. People beg for originality and there's nothing more original than Bong Joon-ho's new film. It's been able to transcend foreign audiences and make its way to domestic audiences who, let's be honest, don't really like films that take a little bit of effort to enjoy. I can't get over the quote from Bong that really encapsulates the state of foreign cinema and explains why Parasite was able to make such a big impact. So that's it. That's the Best Picture nominations in a nutshell. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on the Best Picture nominations. I think this is kind of the best category we've had in a while. A lot of great films in there. Always happy to hear what you guys have to say, what you think, what you're enjoying. With all that being said, thank you guys as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.